What's going on everyone, it's your favorite Jealousator APOC and welcome to the most positive and uplifting channel on the platform. So in my last video, we talked about how other creators have the ability to sometimes address the issues with other channels, but of course only the ones that they deem toxic. Go figure. Even if they're a carbon copy of the people that they're shitting on. And KK and Baby J are the prime example of. Both of them, Karen and Quag, do this whole song and dance about people who who create drama and gossip channels are just unhappy, jealous haters who hate their lives, who have created nothing with their life and are only seeking clout through someone else's name. Even though they and all these other YouTubers use other big names as well. And it's usually to boost dying channels. And you know, it's perfectly okay for them to just bring up gossip whenever they want, whenever it suits their conversations, which we are going to dive into later. But recently, my two favorite outstanding citizens were on LML's podcast called Crazy Stupid Fangirls. I mean, I wouldn't have picked that name, but I guess it's better than Bates. Anywho, LML's brought up the dangers of family vlogging and how Karen and Kwa's vlog channel hits different than most. You know, as in, they're not like other girls. Which is just a damn joke. These people must be on some sort of hallucinogenic because that statement about Karen and Kwa about their vlog channel is dead wrong. Now, before we dive deep, let's be clear clear about something. The only reason Karen and Kwa were even on LML's podcast to begin with was because they have taken a huge hit social media wise due to their shitty actions and proven materialism. And this is just another move to try to save themselves. But you know what? You can't redeem what cannot be redeemed. Okay, get ready for some serious mouth breathing. <laughs> uh, bad bitch, ass fat. 40 inch hair, yours came in a pack. Camato fat, you can see it from the back. Ah, 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 ah. When it comes to family channels, cause I will say like, there is definitely a bit of like a stigma around it. Like when I like say, like, you know, oh, they're, they're like, oh, my friends, yeah, they're a family channel. It's like, it's always kind of like, oh, like, you know. Jeez, can you get her out already? And what stigma are you talking about? L Mills? Are you talking about child exploitation? Is that the stigma? Because that's the only thing that comes to mind. It's a bit of a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, family channels, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not everybody is into family channels, Qua, and that's okay. And you know, it's okay if people are into family channels as well. So why do you call the people who speak out against you jealous haters or say that they're unhappy with their lives even though you know nothing about them but we know all about you because you profit off your life you show your life for money we know everything about you that is unless you're a liar and only showing a side of yourself that you want people to see I mean I definitely believe that maybe everyone who speaks out against family vloggers just see it as something wrong we all have our moral compass but we're loses for calling it out for stating our opinion yeah you're not winning anybody over with that logic kid I mean I watch family channels and I understand because there are, like, the thing is, it's like, you guys really are different, and I'm not just saying that. Like, you guys are a different kind of family channel, in my opinion. Yeah. And so the jerking off begins. <laughs> yeah, let's also keep in mind here that they're friends. Elle Mills goes over their house a few times a year. They're buddies. She's not gonna say they're the most shittiest channel out there. She's hyping them up. She's trying to advocate for them to her audience so that they get some sort of social media boost, you know, like they did with OK Baby. But you know what? At the end of the day it's all just sad because they had to buy ad space for e news just to get a little cloud on instagram to keep those sponsorships a coming and now they're having to rely on other youtubers or other content creators in order to grow and they're still not growing but there are a lot of family channels where it's like it, i don't know they just like yeah, uh, if yeah you me. can tell the vibes are oh yeah, yes. like, no, yeah. For sure. I've watched, yeah i've watched a few channels and it's just like yeah, you can tell. Mm, I don't know if I'd put that online. Did she just really say she wouldn't put something online? We're talking about Karen here. This is the same person who uses her kids for money, not to mention monetize an entire infertility miscarriage journey that just seemed to have disappeared and gone off into the wind. Oh, and let's not forget about the time they had to apologize for putting lives at risk early COVID last year for pregnancy clout. But yes, yeah, sis, you different. Go off. There was this one family that had like a ton of kids. The dad or someone was like, come with me. I have an idea for 
a bit and we're then it's like skin. yo i think we're about to get into some gossip here guys but wait a minute i thought they were against that sort of thing i mean that's what they have said this should be good and then the kid's like no no, no it's starting i want to watch it like and then the mom was like well you don't have a choice get up and go no the like, little what? the little girl said that the, oh the, the little daughter girl oh yeah the yeah. daughter's he's like, like you don't have a choice. she's get like you know you don't have a choice sounds like the future of jess fam's daughter lilia and it doesn't really matter about skits or bits or whatever the kids still have no choice or consent when they're on the vlog channel did all your sons agree to have a birth vlog, Karen? They're brand new babies coming out of that WAP. They don't know any better. You think your kids are going to say they don't want to be on camera that young? No. None of these vlog kids have a choice. And Jess fam proved it. When she said her kids have full control over the vlogs and have consent over everything that's pushed out with them in the vlog. And then her daughter debunks it and says that doesn't happen. I know I keep repeating this, but this is important. Because we have literal evidence that a vlog mom is going against her vlog kids wishes about consent and being on camera and you think jess fam's the only one that's doing it they all do it and later on they're gonna realize what's going on and they may pull away okay baby's kids start to do it kira admits this because they become aware of what's going on that means that there wasn't consent before but the parents don't care yeah and then he was like i don't want to miss it yeah so that's like a different kind of family channel no, like yeah. they have like what the yeah fuck? what the fuck this is insanity. Karen and Qual are the typical shitty family vlogging channel who exploit their children. Just look at their Instagrams. Hey Karen, is this you? Qua, is this you? This you, this you, this you? And this is only a taste of what they do with their children. It, and it, and whenever we were filming, we just film like like normal, you know? No, but, I was gonna yeah. say you guys film, film like, like you guys like kind of film more of your days, if yeah. anything. Like I feel like the kids come kind of you come in a little. They're every just a once part of our life. Yeah, yes. yeah. Day in the life of Jackson, day in the life of Landon, day in the life of Sutton. Oh yeah, their kids are just in the background. Are they f***ing serious? You can go back and look at their last 15 to 20 vlogs. 80 to 90% of them are based around their children, either completely using them within the titles and thumbnails or just in the thumbnails in general. That is still child exploitation. When you highlight your children, you are using them for money and if the vlogs were actually more about karen and Qua's day we would see more of karen and Qua's day and not all this content based around the children we would see more of karen's business behind the scenes and whatever else and we would see Qua doing his thing he's always at porsche meetings driving around on the track why doesn't he include that in the video i know why because he's hiding a hundred and seventy thousand dollar porsche behind the camera which is why he's racing around on a porsche track and going to porsche meets if it was actually about their day they would film all those things but if they did, they would be outing themselves as liars. When we were there, like, they literally hold the camera like, okay, say this like this. And then they'll practice and they'll be like, no okay, way. action. And then they, I was like, if I told my kid to say that, they'd be like what yeah they yeah. would laugh and like go throw a ball or something yeah because this is totally not staged but yeah and then there was this one time that the kid said it wrong and the mom freaked out was, <gasps> no you forgot to say this and then he's like, okay okay yeah Sorry. yeah and they that's had to horrible redo it. yeah that's absolutely horrible that's the entire point but of course, Karen and Qua aren't terrible. Apparently, they hit different. Apparently, their vibe is different, which makes no sense because just look at their channel. It's riddled with garbage. And again, this is gossip. They sound like jealous haters, at least by their logic. They must really hate their lives and be unhappy to say these things. But you know what's quite funny? When I bring things forward with evidence, with concrete proof that they lied and have contradictions to everything they do, actual audio and visual clips of lies, I get called a liar and a jealous hater and a loser and then I hate my life and all this and all that crap. But Karen and Qua can speak out against vloggers or another channel and it's going to be taken as fact by their cronies. But they don't have any evidence. This is just what they're saying. They have no proof. I believe them because I know vloggers are like that. In fact, I think they're talking about the eight passengers because that makes sense. But how come Karen and Qua can talk about this, but I can't? Hypocrites. I was like, that's I know. They, are, they need to be getting paid. Like, no, yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 What the hell? It's such a like a <laughs> like Disney Channel. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, it is. It really is because it's like they're working. Yo, I cannot believe this podcast episode exists. Karen just straight up said the kids deserve to get paid. Do your kids get paid, Karen? No, because apparently you spent all this money even though you had back taxes and you were spending it on bougie material shit instead of being a responsible adult. So I highly doubt if they're not paying their taxes that they're not giving their children any money. They might have some tucked away, but those kids aren't getting paid even though they're always on the forefront of their Instagram ads. And again, highly comical that they're allowed to say 
these kids need to get paid because they're working. But I just said that Karen and Kwa's kids need to get paid for what they do for them. But if a crony comes on here or KK and Baby J see this and they spew it out on their Instagram, I'll be called a hater for stating the same exact thing they did. Please make sense of this already. There was this one family channel. I don't even remember their name, but I remember like, like it was got so bad, like on camera, you can see that they were literally like bullying their kids basically. And Ooh. I think their children got taken away from them. Oh, wasn't that like father of five or something? Yes, father of five, yes. Yeah. Oh, remember? yeah. And they weren't- Oh yeah, I know the story because even though I said gossip and drama is a bad thing and only hateful losers push that sort of content out, I pay attention to it. Isn't there logic that whatever you see on camera is what they want you to see? But what if that's what they wanted you guys to see and you're taking it as truth? Again, I believe it, but that's the reality of their logic. Karen and Kwa don't know how to give a solid argument, but here we are talking about another problematic channel when they say that's something they're against. I think that's why I like your guys' videos so much because I feel like they really just feel natural. Like I just feel like I'm just like there with you. Like it's like Aww, very chill. You. Look at that ego feeding. <laughs> so I got a question for this chick. I don't know who she is, but I got a question for you. Did you feel like you were right there with them? Was it the one where Karen faked her entire infertility journey or her miscarriages? Or was it the one where Karen wanted to burn something Kwa bought? Or when Karen bought something behind Kwa's back even when he was trying to teach his son a life lesson? Or was it the one where Karen claimed another female's pregnancy as her own for pregnancy clout during mandatory quarantine after the fact of having a miscarriage a couple months prior and starting her whole infertility journey? Which one are you talking about? Give us some details and information. Stop being so vague. I'm just curious. They can get, they for sure can get repetitive and boring. I feel no. like it's just you guys our life, say you know? No, yeah, but, no, there, but it's like what people, people want. Yeah, they want to be like just, part of your life. I yeah, love it. I mean, they're not lying. I literally saw a comment where somebody said they would watch Karen and Kwa and their family watch the wall for seven hours or something like that, which is just some straight simp and shit right there. But now we can aim a question towards Karen and Kwa, which is just a more logic failure. So if you have a passion for vlogging and you vlog for memories and you love it so much, how come you guys have basically stopped? I mean, you're only pushing out a couple vlogs a week now. If you love it and there's all this passion and whatever, how can it be repetitive and boring? And let's be clear, they're talking about themselves. They're not talking about their fans are going to be bored. I know that's what they spew, but like I said, their fans have said they would watch them watch the wall for seven hours. So when they say the vlogs are repetitive and boring, they're referring to themselves being bored. Kwa has even stated before that he gets bored editing the same type of vlogs. And you know what? I get it. That's perfectly okay, but they're the ones that push out this big passion crap. They're the ones that said that they love it so much and that they started it based around memories. But all their actions and everything they have said so far contradicts that entire story to the reason why they started or their love for it. In fact, it kind of solidifies that they only do it for money, which is why they put less effort and have slowed down their vlogging and are leaning more towards Instagram because it's just riddled with ads now and they're trying to make more money off of that because it's easier than vlogging. It's two and two people. It's really not that hard. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we well, get no. nervous sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> God. People like calling child services, like that's a thing. That's happened to you guys, hasn't it? Like crazy fan. It wasn't a fan. It was some crazy person calling CPS on them because they thought the kids were in danger or something. Which, by the way, I completely condemn. I do not condone anybody calling CPS on them. Their kids are not in danger. I don't think that they're bad parents. Karen and Kwa are just highly irresponsible with their children. But that does not call for somebody to call CPS on them. But maybe, just maybe, somebody doing that is karma for Karen stalking somebody on Instagram to find out their personal information, to contact her family and the business that they work for to try to get her fired ruin her livelihood. Maybe there's just a little karma there. Let's not pretend like Karen's innocent because boy, she is far from it. That's, yeah, I think like insane. four times now. We literally had to move. No, they didn't have to move. They just wanted to buy it and spend money. It's on their podcast. Yeah, so we moved into our dream home and we could not be more grateful, more happy. So why now? Why now did we get the house? Why didn't we like wait a little bit? Buy later? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of an impulse. You really freaking wanted to? <laughs> well, you put it in my head and then you can't right, take so, it back. Okay, so this is how we move. Wait, you the can't house. bring me to a house. 
I just wanted to look at I it. I told you. They just use the safety thing as a guise to hide their materialism. This house has been their dream. Their dream home since high school. You think they're really pressed about moving into their dream home five to ten years early. Let's also add here that after the CPS stuff, after all their stalker stuff, they go off to another country. They actually go off into a couple of different countries right after all it happens. And they went away for two weeks and left the kids in that apparent unsafe house with Karen's elderly mom. Because people were like driving up and down our street. So I was at Starbucks with Daniel yeah. and I was just sitting there and I see like somebody ring the doorbell. So I check like our doorbell camera. It's and a mom I, and a daughter. Paul opens the door and he's like, yes. And she, he's like, she's like, I'm so sorry. This is like such an invasion of your privacy, but like I watch you on YouTube and like all this stuff. And I like instantly, and Quaz like, oh no, it's okay. And yeah, that's because he's a cuck boy. You think if he don't stand up for his wife, he's gonna stand up for anyone else? Even if it's to protect his privacy? <laughs> he doesn't have it in him which i find odd for someone who used to start fights in high school and as a young adult but imagine bitching about your privacy being violated which i do understand but imagine bitching about it while also actively shrugging off with a smile on your face and i was like if you even have to say it's an invasion of privacy, why the fuck are you at my house? Dude, she was popping off and I was trying to talk over her, all of this on the doorbell, and then I'm just like there with a smile, just like <laughs> trying to cover the doorbell. Yeah, see, here's a big issue with vloggers. They don't actually care about privacy. They share the most intimate shit ever, even though they claim that's not what they do. All you gotta do is go to the channel. They share every aspect of their lives. But a big issue with them is they don't have any boundaries with their audience, which causes huge problems when you tell your audience that they're like family members they're going to think like family members i don't condone anybody going up to their house that is a privacy violation but when you put shit in little kids heads they'll think it's okay this girl was with her mom she obviously was young an adult would not do this <laughs> I was like, you're where my kids sleep. Like, if I'm out at the mall, whatever, like, for sure, like, come say hi. Like, do not yeah. come up to my front door where my kids are like, one, they run around naked in the house. Like, you yeah. know, like, it's like, they could have easily just ran out naked, like, hey, you know, like, who yeah, knows? Yeah. Yeah. She literally vlogs her son's potty training. The kids are always run around half naked in the vlogs, but now she cares? <laughs> Cool. It was really the awkward. next story. <laughs> so there was this. So we we ended up having to move because there was just so many issues. And now again, they moved because they wanted to. You know, it's not like they're living in their dream home or anything like that. No, that would be horrible. CPS got called on us, all of that, and then this one girl who went to high school with us. Let's also note here, and we're gonna go back to the CPS thing for a second. That just because you moved into a gated community does not stop CPS from coming to your home. That's the government. They'll find your ass, especially if they think you're abusing your child not that karen and qua are just saying a gate and a guard isn't going to stop the government from coming to your home that doesn't make any sense it will stop stalkers but not the government oh and mind you karen was never scared of the cps stuff she literally says this in another podcast but yeah so being a youtuber a parent on the internet i had no idea that this was a thing like this thing that happened to us uh-huh it's a thing. Like it happens to almost every single parent on YouTube. Every person that I've talked to at least. Every family YouTuber? And if it hasn't happened to them, they're like, oh, I'm so scared for that. And I'm like, why are you scared? Don't be scared. Like it's not a scary thing. Like the first time it happened to me, I was kind of like, what the hell? But I wasn't scared. I was yeah. like, there's no way in hell my kids are getting taken from me mm. or anything. Yeah. Like because I feel like fear, I, I guess it is a kind of a scary thing if you've gone through it as a child and everything but to me it's like it's just like more of a, a waste of time you know mm -hmm. no yeah it, it wastes their resources and that's what you call a contradiction folks started like posting where we were all the time where we're constantly at she'd drive by our house and take photos and post it online and like all this stuff she'll sit here and complain about this stuff about somebody taking pictures of her and her children or whatever but doesn't care that some of her weird ass fans you know the ones that run their fan pages have pictures of their family of karen Nicole and all her kids and the dogs and whatever else on the cover of their phones literally one of 
of them, probably the most annoying one, praise Karen on Mother's Day, but not her own mother. Just think about that. But she's worried about other people taking pictures of her children, but not all these weirdos online who worship them. I DM'd her and like confronted her because I didn't have like her phone number or anything. And yeah. <laughs> she blocked me instantly. And she was more of like Taylor's friend. So Taylor texted her and she was like, I've just been going through so much stuff. Like all this stuff like starts apologizing. What? Like, Taylor was like, yeah, Taylor was like, fuck you. And like, I didn't get a chance to like say fuck you because like, <laughs> does that, you know? So well, apparently Taylor does. After Taylor's wedding, we went to like this bar and she was there. Oh no way! God. Yeah, and Taylor was like walking up, and Taylor Taylor's a cancer, so she's not gonna go up to her, but she'll be like, <laughs> "Fuck you" from the back, you know? Yeah. And I go, "No, that's not enough." She like yelled, "Fuck you!" and like flicked off. I was like, "No, fuck that!" Like 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 I'm going up to her. So then I walked straight up to her, and I was like wasted too, and I was just like, "Ah, liquid courage." I was like, "I didn't get to say this. Or I want. I'm making sure that you." What the fuck am I saying? I don't know. Probably another lie, which is why you can't talk or think straight. You know, per use. I'm making sure I'm saying this to your face. Like, fuck you and fuck your whole fucking family. Don't ever talk about my family or take pictures of my family or come after my family. Like, that's fucked up. You know, I get it. I understand why Karen would be pissed. It makes sense. It is a privacy violation. But aside from the girl that stalked you, why are you saying fuck you and your whole family? What the hell did the family do? The family didn't do anything to you and you're cursing at them? That's not fair. You don't know them. They didn't do anything. It is pretty cute though to see Karen act all tough because she talks this big game about people not saying things about her or a qua or her family, but she has nothing to say to me. Her friend was like, who is she? And I was like, she knows who I am. And just be careful. She might be talking shit about you to all your fucking friends. Oh, and I like, my went God. off. That really doesn't apply here because she wasn't your friend. And then I just walked away and she didn't oh, say one thing. I That's love, iconic. I, yeah, I love that side of Karen so much. I, I love it. Karen pops off. Now with me, she cried after seeing my videos yes it's like, I, like what no no <laughs> it's insane i don't understand how her excuse is that she was going through something what are you going through that you want to like put someone else's family like yeah. at risk yeah. Yeah. Like, and, that's actually and, crazy oh sweetheart you must be new here pam's pregnancy our friend pam and chris are having a baby you guys didn't watch that everyone was talking about how dumb we were for not social distancing and i totally agree we are Idiots. Here, here's why we filmed it, which, like I said, is not an excuse. We should not have filmed it or met up on that day. But we've been, like us, we've been in quarantine um, since, like Karen said, before they started the lockdown. So we know that we don't have it, even though uh, we yeah. didn't get tested. We, uh, I mean, I don't know, but we know that we're safe for now, like as far as we know. They've been having a really hard time. Family wise. Pam was telling us like the, the day she found out, I think the minute she found out she called us, Chris's father had just passed away and like a bunch of stuff was going on, a bunch of bad, bad, bad was going on in their lives. And this was like the one, the one little piece of good news that she could tell Chris. And so she asked if we could film a video and she was so anxious to tell him and so excited. And we were too. Yeah. And so we agreed. And, and we uh, made that the was, wrong decision. Yeah, but, but it's the wrong decision. Yeah. We were dumb and we're sorry for putting lives in danger i know the world is in hectic craziness right now but yeah. um yeah, there's no excuse. So here they are agreeing with this chick about how there's no reason or excuse to give to put other lives at risk. But Karen and Qua literally did that. She was like DMing me. I shouted out. She had like a little blog. I shouted out her fucking blog. Like, why would you do that when this person violated your privacy? That doesn't make any sense. Now I really don't believe anything you just said. Oh, she was shit. like DMing me, like asking me advice for her. But she has a baby. She has a yeah. son and she's driving around doing this shit. Like, yeah, no, she would, she would take pictures of us with her son in the back seat. Like she would follow us like around. And here's their moral compass with everything they've done with their kids in the car. Karen probably had all her kids snuggled up on bed when she was stalking somebody using her kick-ass platform to do so. Wow. That is fucking insane. Yeah. That's insane. I know. That yeah. Jealousy's crazy, isn't it? Ah, uh, there it is, the jealousy card. I was waiting for that one. It seems to be the go-to for these types. Anyways, all you jealous haters, that's about it. Like I said, I don't condone any weird fan stand behavior. No stalking, no CPS stuff, unless it's actually truly needed. Not the stalking part, the CPS part. But it's quite comical and hypocritical coming from Karen and Qua, who manipulate their audience into thinking that they're just like family. Who has literally admitted to stalking, cyberbullying, and invading someone's privacy and try to ruin their livelihoods. You really can't complain about it when you're doing the same shit. In the conclusion, talk about you and yours. I, I just made up that name. I can honestly find out. 
Okay. No. It's very that's easy can't. to find out. That's I'm just, just telling as weird you. as her. I know. I just want that. See, that's the point. Like, <gasps> as much as you can find out about us, we can find out about you. It's really easy to find out. Like, you're on the internet. Everything traces back to somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that somewhere traces back to your name or your mom's name or whoever's name is on the account.